Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about the integumentary system. What is the integumentary system? So it's basically just another word for our skin. Our skin is the largest and most complex organ in our body and has very many important functions. The main function is acting as a protective barrier against the environment including physical agents such as mechanical forces and ultraviolet radiation chemical irritants. Uh, it also plays an important role in regulating body temperature through sweat glands evaporating water or through insulating properties of fatty tissue. The thickness of the skin ranges between 0.5 to 6 millimeters. The skin is thicker on the trunk including dorsal surfaces and limbs compared to ventral surfaces such as the neck which is much thinner. The skin is made up of the epidermis and the dermis. Epidermis comprises of tough stratified squamous epithelium while the dermis is composed of dense connective tissue. The integumentary system also consists of appendages of the skin such as hair, nails, sebaceous glands which produce an oily sub substance called sebum. So now I'll be talking about the skin and what it's composed of. So the skin is composed of layers and the three main layers are the uppermost epidermis, the dermis and the lower hypodermis, also known as the subcutaneous layer. The epidermis. So the epidermis is the outer layer of the skin. It acts as a protective barrier against friction, pressure and abrasion and minimizes water loss from the body. It also plays a role in shielding internal organs from harmful chemicals and microorganisms as well as maintaining body fluid and body temperature. The epidermis comprises of stratified squamous epithelium which contains layers of flattened cells with the absence of blood vessels. Appendages arrive from outer differentiated and stratified squamous epithelium of keratinocytes. Skin, hair, nails are made of this um, keratin which it comes from the keratinocytes and the epidermis is comprised of many different cells and these include keratinocytes, melanocytes and Langerhans cells. Keratinocytes are produced the most and are derived from the proliferative basal layer and migrate through the epidermis up to the surface skin layers. So there are five different layers of the epidermis. The first one is the stratum corneum. This upper layer of the epidermis is most impacted by cleansing, moisturization and skin treatments. It's comprised of enucleated flattened cells also known as corneocytes which creates the skin's protect protective barrier. The granular layer will replace these cells with new cells. Uh, the thick keratinocyzed layers of dead squamous epithelium makes up to 75% of the thickness of the epidermis. The cells in the stratum corneum are closely fused together to minimize water evaporation and maintain skin hydration. So the second one, layer is the stratum lucidum, which is a thin layer which is seen in the thick skin of the palms soles and lips. There is an absence of nuclei and organelles but there are desmosomes and allodin which is a semi-fluid material. This causes the stratum lucidum to appear translucent. The third one is the stratum granulosum which is made up to three to four layers of flattened cells with high, high sorry, keratohyaline granules. After that is the stratum spinulosum which comprises of many layers of polygonal cells. It contains a large oval shaped nuclei and cell mitosis occurs occasionally. Intracellular bridges are developed from spiny projections on the cell surface joining to projections of the nearby cells. The intracellular bridges facilitate the movement of lymph fluid and assist in improving skin nourishment. And finally, the stratum basal, also known as the basal layer, is made up of a single layer of column epithelial cells located on the uppermost dermis. 
It helps position the epidermis to the dermis and it is comprised of many cells including keratinocytes, melanocytes, Merkel cells and Langerhans cells. The dermis. So the dermis consists of connective tissue including cells, collagen and elastic fibres with, extra, with an extracellular matrix. Sorry, with extracellular matrix components which are produced by dermal fibroblasts. The dermis is made up of two layers, the superficial papillary dermis and the deeper reticular dermis. The papillary dermis, which is the thin upper layer, is located under the epidermis and is made up of loose connective tissue containing mainly capillaries and collagen fibres called elastin, which is, which is like a stretchy material. The reticular layer lies beneath the papillary dermis and is the thicker layer of the dermis which contains dense irregular connective tissue, cells, nerves, lymphatic vessels and appendages. The main type of dermal collagen is type 1 followed by collagen type 3. This layer comprises of glycosaminoglycans attached which attach all the dermal components together. Many nerves and blood vessels in the dermis help maintain the avascular epidermis and appendages. The main fibres in the dermis are collagen fibres which are the main type of fibre. They provide the skin with tensile strength. In the papillary dermis the collagen bundles are small whereas they are thicker bundles in the reticular dermis. And elastin fibres provide the skin with elasticity and flexibility. So the hypodermis is comprised of loose connective tissue, blood vessels and fat cells also known as adipocytes. It connects skin to underlying organs and muscles. Blood vessels and no, um, nerves are enclosed by connective tissue fibres and can endure pulling force. Uh, fat cells are arranged in lobules and are separated by septae. The septae has nerves, larger blood vessels, fibrous tissue and fibroblasts. And, the, the sept and they can um, create the dimples in the skin, which is also known as cellulite. Appendages. So there are a few. Sebaceous glands, nails, sweat glands, hair. First, I'll be talking about hair. Hair is made up of a fibrous protein structure. It consists of the hair follicle found in the dermis and the hair shaft, which arises from the surface of the skin. It is made up of dead keratinocytes, cells produced by the hair follicles and assists in identifying touch, protection, and controlling body temperature, also known as thermoregulation. The hair shaft comprises of an outer layer, also known as the cuticle, middle layer, which is the cortex, consisting of tough keratin and an inner layer, or the medulla, consisting of soft keratin. Sebaceous glands. So sebaceous, sebaceous glands play a role in the phyllosebaceous unit. They, they arise from hair follicular epithelium and secrete sebum comprised of an oily substance of triglycerides and fatty acids from holocrine glands. Sebum is a lubricant which acts as a protective barrier for the skin and adds moisture to the skin. They are found all over the hair, all over the skin, sorry. However, they are more on the face and scalp because they are linked with hair. They don't appear on the palms or the soles. Sweat glands. Sweat glands are eccrine glands which produce a watery fluid known as sweat. To the surface of the skin they are mostly located in the axillae, otherwise known as the underarms, as well as the palms and soles. There is a dermal coil secretory component as well as a straight distal duct linking to the epidermis. The hypothalamus thermoregulatory center regulates sweat produ production. Sweat is heat loss through water evaporation which cools the body down. Thanks for watching.